gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the test drive part of the video. Uh, we are very soon about to enter the ocean, uh, simulating a Sydney to Nelson Bay run. Something that uh, I believe many of you are gonna be interested in doing in a boat like this. Um, so where, where are we right now? We're just here exiting Sydney Harbour and the offshore part of that trip from here to Nelson Bay, it's approximately 80 nautical miles. Um, so, at our current SOG of 24 knots, we would be there in approximately three and a half hours. For the sailors of you watching this video, I'm gonna say that again. 80 nautical miles between here and Nelson Bay in three and a half hours. Sitting, well standing as I am right now, with the possibility of sitting in this very luxurious leather-bound chair, steering with my Rockstar joystick, or enjoying the standing position as I am. I'm just gonna take the boat through some considerable swell here. We're just gonna point north and just to give you this simulation. We're doing this uh, in the afternoon. It's not early morning before the winds come up, none of that stuff. It's actually um, after lunchtime. Uh, the north uh, nor'easter is in. It's only a moderate one, it's 15 knots of nor'easter uh, today. And we're just going straight into the breeze right now. I'm just gonna roll with this for a little bit so you guys can come along for the journey. Um, what am I on? I'm on the Sabre 45 Salon Express. This is superb luxury. So, if you have done a lot of sailing in your lifetime, and you see value in doing these trips at speed and in ultimate luxury and comfort, then this is the sort of boat you should consider looking at. You know, we are just rolling through, messy chop right now. We've got the wind on our bow. She's parting the waves. She's sending the wash straight out to the side and I'm comfortable. And we're doing that right now at 23 knots with a fuel consumption of 100 litres total per hour. So we've got the IPS 600s uh, on this one. So they're 435 horsepower. You can option it to the 650s. Um, and fuel capacity on this boat is pretty big. It's like 1,000, I think it was about 1,800 plus liters. Um, on the fuel stats from Sabre, uh, at a seven knot speed, you could, you've got over 1,000 nautical miles range so you can actually wind this thing back to displacement speed and just do those long long trips if you so desire but i suspect if you're like me or many people you're probably just going to be happy to do those 80 150 300 nautical mile runs uh, because you can do a 300 nautical mile run on this boat with the current fuel capacity let's just turn across the across the swell now um, and you know you could do Sydney to, the Gold, Sydney to the Gold Coast, you just day trip it. Go halfway, pull in, fuel up, do it in a day if you choose, or um, sleep comfortably overnight. Going over some decent waves here. And, and just finish the journey the next day. Wow, this is just so comfortable. So what am I noticing? Um, center of gravity is low. Uh, 23 degrees of dead rise in the middle of the boat here is noticeable. So we're going from a nice, beautiful down east style bow. These boats come from the home of down east lobster style boats in Maine. So they're actually built there, they're made in America. And put it this way, it tells. I can tell, it's obvious is what I'm trying to say. Um, the quality is exceptional, but the ride quality right now is what I would expect from a traditional down east style boat with, albeit, very good performance because I'm still maintaining 24 knots here. Now we're going down uh, or with the wind behind us. We're not going down swell so much. We've actually got the swell coming in this sort of direction. It's from my port aft quarter heading uh, to my starboard bow like that. And some of it's bouncing off the, uh, the rocks just here at the moment. So it's, you could say this is a very confused sea state. Um, but from a passenger point of view, this is comfortable. So, yeah, what was I saying? It, she parts the bow at the front, she goes to 23 degrees in the middle of the boat and about 16 degrees at the back. So you've got more of a, a, a flat um, transom to allow those uh, pod drives to give, uh, to give them lots of clear water. So hydrodynamically, they can grab onto the water and accelerate the boat efficiently. 
Um, we've got interceptors, which is uh, basically, instead of trim tabs, you've just got these interceptors that will drop down and do all the trimming automatically for you. So it really is a, a set and forget. Just have your hand on the throttle and steer if you choose, or I'll do this whilst we're actually out here in the ocean. You can actually just go back here, press this button here, and proceeding at 23 knots in my beautiful leather-bound chair, I'm now, I'm now operating the boat, steering it with the joystick. How cool is that? So I'll actually just... There we go. You just lean the boat, lean the joystick. Wow, that is just so cool, guys. So I don't have any throttle control, but this just uh, from a long range cruising perspective, to have the ability to sit up here in this wonderful leather chair, um, to control the boat from here on long passengers, passages, uh, this is just the way to do it. You, you really can't get any better. I've got a footrest, which looks to be adjustable. We can uh, check that out in the walkthrough. That's gonna be separate video to this. Keep watching, I'll link to that at the end of this video. Um, but you and a navigator, which is really this style of boat, it's designed for couples who've probably done a lot of boating, is my guess, um, to enjoy and do these, these long trips. So now that we're coming in the heads, I'm gonna to start to talk about the speed and fuel flow, just to give you a feel for that. We'll actually just start to take the boat through some calmer water, albeit there's still a little bit of slop, but we'll, we'll find some calmer water in a second to give you some more accurate representation. So I'll just deactivate that, I'll go back to manual steering. So, at a speed of 24 knots, I've got revs sitting on 3,000. That gives me a fuel flow of between 100 and 110 litres per hour. If I bump that speed up a little bit, I'm not in flat water. I'm just gonna drive towards Middlehead here. So now I'm at 3,100 revs. My speed I'm going up and down waves. So it's ranging between 24 to 25 and a half knots there. And my fuel flow is 125 litres. That's both sides, both sides. Now I'm just gonna raise that again. We're now at 3,200 revs. The other thing I wanna point out, this boat's just under 50 feet, LOA. So she's 45 feet on deck, but she, you know the full boat is just under 50 feet. I'm not even raising my voice to talk to you. I normally raise my voice just automatically in these videos because uh, there's a lot of engine noise in the background and I just want you to be able to hear me on the microphone. This thing is so well insulated. The engines are out behind this back door. Um, the sound insulation being provided is exceptional. Like it really is great. So at 3,200 revs, I'm burning 138 to 140 litres, still in rough water, not flat. Let's give it a little bit more. Oh, there's Comanche. Maxi yacht, built in Maine, just won the Sydney to Hobart. There you go, she's just uh, off to our port side. I hope, unfortunately, that's not gonna come up on camera, so you'll just have to believe me. Um, 3,300 revs, giving me a speed return of 28 knots, feels pretty good. By the way, the bow raise on acceleration right, right through this whole speed range has been minimal. She's a very level running hull is the way I'm gonna describe it. Um, little short Dan of 5.7 stature is not having any problems seeing over this bow. Um, so we're now sitting at 28 knots, 3,350. No, let's get that up to three, three, four. 3,400 revs. Okay, 29 knots, 150 litres. 150 litres at 29 knots. Let's give it a bit more. Okay, that's flat chat right now. Got a little bit of activity up ahead, so I'm just gonna try not to bother too many of these people. I'm now seeing 168 litres consumption. I'm seeing 30 to 31 knots. And bearing in mind, we're still rolling through some waves at the moment. So I'll just maintain that for a little bit. Okay, down the wave, just saw 32 and a half knots there. We've, we've easily got over a metre of swell rolling through the heads here. So I'll just back that off to a fast cruise. So I believe 
your efficient cruise on this boat. If we just play with that, let's come back to 24. Yeah, see, look at that. You, you come off that, that acceleration there and settle into 24, the boat maintains the same attitude. So that's gonna be quite comfortable for long distance cruising. And this isn't all about long distance cruising, I gotta add. I'm just wanting to point this out to so many of you who I believe have done enough sailing and will see epic value in a boat like this. This is absolutely a boat somebody could operate as a solo operator for day boating. Yeah, see, look at, at that 20. Now let's come back. Let's just run in the flat water here for a bit. 24 knots in flat-ish water. I'm seeing 95 litres. I believe you would, we'll just slow her down now as we come into the bay. I believe you would cruise around efficiently at that 23 to 24 and a half knot speed range. Um, and then as, at a, a fast cruise of maybe 29, 28 knots, seems sensible on this boat. And then a top speed anywhere from that 31, you might even see 33 knots if the conditions were right on this boat. So what we'll do, I'm actually just gonna go back to the joystick. We'll just, we'll just bleed off some of that speed and that wash behind us. And I'm just gonna give you a quick demo on what can be achieved because the visibility on all points on this boat from the helm is exceptional. Um, it, even opening the boat up and packing it down, there's just blinds that pull down. So it's really, really simple to keep the UV out of the boat. Um, but if you, if you need to be a solo operator, we've got this wonderful door here. I've got everything closed today because I wanted you to hear the sound, but we've also got the air conditioning on because why not? It's really hot out there today. Um, so I've just got it in low docking mode right now. There is two modes. You can actually uh, do, uh, activate high mode or low mode and it will manoeuvre the boat at a faster speed if you want. I'll just do it slowly just for the camera. And from this central position, I can really, I feel like I've got an huge amount of control and just check that out so if you're not used to motorboats and you're scared or worried about putting the thing in the dock you literally just spend a day getting used to this joystick and it's it's like a video game and this boat is of a displacement and a design that it's gonna react very predictably is, is what I'm trying to convey. Not all boats are really easy to maneuver, even with the joystick, because the, the lighter, skinnier boats, they might want to lurch around a little bit, is, is my observation, um, with some of these boats that I've driven. Whereas right now, now let's just slide it to starboard. Yeah, that's super predictable. That is actually similar to the Riviera 5800 Sport Yacht, which I found very, very easy to drive. Um, and that's a bigger, heavier boat, a lot more displacement in that compared to this, but this actually feels just as easy. So I'm doing that from my um, Rockstar captain's chair, but what's great about that joystick is if I wanted to have more viz looking aft, I can actually still just drive it like this because it's the same direction. In, you're not having to do lots of mental calculations like you would if you're operating it with the wheel and the throttle. So anyway, um, this boat's exceptional. This boat's in a class of its own. If you were comparing this boat um, to competition, I would say you, you're you probably looking at something like the Palm Beach 45, maybe the Grand Banks East Bay 44. This That's the sort of calibre that I'm seeing and experiencing right now. This is a style of boat that you will think absolutely nothing of jumping in, stocking up, fueling up and going to Queensland. Um, in the same breath, having a really, really luxurious day out with your friends and family and not being affected by the weather conditions because uh, the boat can take it. So if you're interested in a detailed walkthrough, that's coming next. It's a separate video to this. Give us a like if this was valuable and then click up on the link coming up on the screen right now. Thanks guys.